This is actual insanity. Look at how many factory striders are getting dropped. Now, I must admit, this hasn't happened to me just yet. And I've been playing on Helldive difficulty. But this is one hell of a drop. I mean, there's two factory striders there. And then another one dropped right in front. That is insane. That's actually insane. Anyway, yeah, like I said, guys, I've been playing on Helldive. And uh, I'm seeing a lot of factory striders. Although, you don't have to play on the hardest difficulties to see them. You will see them playing on basically any difficulty. Uh, obviously, not on the lowest of the low difficulties, the super easy modes. Uh, but I think from difficulty 4 and above, you can actually go on specific missions to take on factory striders. Uh, this is kind of redundant on high levels because you just get them dropped in your face anyway. So, you're fighting them regardless. But they are such a cool enemy to fight against. And this is why Helldivers is one hell of an awesome game. Anyway, we've got some coverage here that I think we need to discuss about things like fire damage which it, this is going to be really interesting but also well just the, the I, I don't want to call it drama but the debate i guess is is the the better descriptive word to use about this idea of war bonds versus bug fixes versus update cadence because we've got a bit more information here and helldivers have actually put a poll up on discord that we're going to look at but i'm going to throw a disclaimer out before we even get to that polls on discord and even like posts on reddit they're only such a small fraction of the actual community you do have to take them with a grain of salt but yeah let's break all of this down spitzer the uh, associate community manager sheds a bit more light on the debate of war bonds versus patches and bug fixes and how they are kind of struggling to get them all done and this is what they say arrowhead still has a very small team compared to the success of the game so I think that is obviously, you know, that that's the case. The game's got really popular and they've got a relatively small team. Now, I can't actually find any accurate numbers for the size of Arrowhead, but I think it's around 100 developers. And you know what is very similar to that? A game called Overwatch. That only had around, I think Overwatch was made by 60 or 70 devs. Uh, the original Overwatch, that was. Obviously, now it's got hundreds of devs pumping out loads of Battle Pass content and all that stuff. But like back in the day, it was a small team. That put the game together and it does show you that smaller teams they do make some awesome stuff especially when you get to this sort of triple a double a triple a level uh anyway spitzer goes on to say and while we have dedicated dedicated quality assurance the people fixing bugs with weapons and armor for example are the same people in charge of making new weapons and armor so the issue there is you've got people doing dual jobs which is fine because they're obviously a smaller team but if they keep adding new stuff to the game and as i say this is straight up confirmation here that the people working on new weapons are also tasked with fixing old weapons that don't work now i'm not sure whether this encompasses balance of the weapons as well because if it does there's an additional thing that they're looking at but let's just for argument's sake say it's weapon bugs versus new weapons they are committed to adding new weapons every month to the game and it's not just every month it isn't just during the war bond we get weapons added as um, major order updates or just updates anyway in the game. You remember when the Quasar and the Heavy Machine Gun dropped? I'm and, and even the mechs. I mean, that was an awesome way they dropped the mechs into the game. What's the next weapon going to be? We've got a lot of factory striders at the moment. Are we going to get some sort of super weapon to deal with them? There's going to be something which happens. So there's more weapons being added to the game. And then there's bugs that are still outstanding that need to be fixed. And as time goes on, there's going to be a massive deficit built up here where there's going to be loads of bugs, but they're still adding new content. And I fear that without increasing the size of that team, or maybe even slowing down the rate of war bonds, or, or even just adding new weapons, that this is going to be a problem. But the issue is, we need new weapons to keep being added to the game. It's very complicated. We will get into this, though, in the video, because I think it is super cool to do this. It's important to us to maintain the cadence that we promised. One war bond per month, but equally important to everyone to fix the glaring bugs and technical issues. There's just only so much time in a work week. And here's the, the kick. They can't have both. They can't have both. They can't keep this cadence and then also try and fix technical issues and bugs when they're actually not managing to do that at the moment anyway and then say, well, there isn't enough time to do it. So, oh, well, we'll just carry on. That's the kind of like vibe I get from that. They, they can't have it both ways. But they cannot not have it both ways. That's the other issue. They can't just go, okay, we're not going to add new content to the game. We're going to fix bugs. Because I hate to say this, guys, Bugs are bloody boring for the general population of the player base. They don't give a crap about whatever scope, weapon, bug, or, oh, well, sometimes the game crashes. They don't care. They actually don't care. What they care about is, oh, my God, look at this new insane laser cannon. Look at this amazing new Eagle One stratagem. That's what they care about. So, and Arrowhead know this, right? And we know this as well. So, Arrowhead have got to keep that stuff coming to the game. 
But the problem is, it's just the same team that are doing it in respect to weapons, that is. The same team that are adding the weapons to the game that are trying to fix the weapon bugs. And I think it's just too much workload. So this is... Uh, I I'm a bit worried when I read this because I think things probably do need to change. But I'm not even sure how they go about changing this. Because, again, we all have to remember, you can't just add more staff. You can't just go, oh, well, our game's wildly popular. We've made hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. Let's just go and hire 20 new devs and just make them work on fixing bugs. Because those 20 new devs are going to take two, three months to get up to speed to even understand the tools that they use at Arrowhead. Because they've probably got proprietary tools that they use to do things with the game and all of that stuff. That takes time. Yeah, and then we're two or three months down the line. And, yeah, it, it is very difficult this is to solve. So let's go and take a look at Discord, because there is a poll on Discord, which says this. If you had to pick one, which would you like to see going forward? More weapons or a large balancing change to weapons? New armors with more varied traits and passives? Different objective modifiers, biomes and planets? Content? fix No, no new content, sorry. Fix the technical issues and bugs. Now, you guys can see the percentages here. You can see what I voted for. I want the technical issues fixed. But I'm an idiot, and I'm a guy who's making videos on this game. And I'm a guy who you could probably say is more of like a, uh, you know, I'm playing it in a different... I don't even know how to explain this. Let's, I don't want to say I'm a hardcore gamer. I'm not. If I was ultra hardcore, I wouldn't be level 50 in Helldivers. I'd be the max level, right? Let's be real. I play Helldivers, I have fun, I come off Helldivers, I do other stuff, right? It's not like I'm just sitting there playing the game non-stop. But I feel like it's just kind of like a, a different perspective, I guess. I don't know, it's hard to explain. But that's why I want new... I, I, I don't particularly care too much about new content at the moment i just want the game to be very uh solid i don't want the game to crash i want the bugs to be fixed because in my eyes that's what gives you a very strong foundation to build upon but i know that's not the real world that we live in because if you look at these votes well actually the most popular vote is different objective modify uh, different objectives modifies biomes and planets so what does that tell you well that tells you that People want new levels. They want new uh, mission objectives. They want new things to do. They don't want to get bored. And I think that's the key thing, right? And this is what Arrowhead know. It's very boring, like I said, to go around and fix bug fixes. It is not very boring to add an insane, and I mean actually insane, defense mission that we got recently with the evacuate high-value personnel, which apparently they were hell divers. We were evacuating. Um, but th that was an insane mission. And at what point did I give a shit about the bugs in that mission? I didn't. Well, I was killing the bugs, I guess. Well, no, I was killing the bots, but you could do it against the bugs as well. But killing the bots, I mean, it just felt great, right? It felt actually insane. In fact, could you do it against the bugs? I think you could. I'm sure I did it against the bugs. I might be hallucinating. I'm not even sure. Um, but yeah, it was insane. You, know, you don't care about the bugs then. That's the problem, isn't it? We can sit here and say we care about bugs, but really we want new content. Now, there is a caveat here with all of this Discord stuff. Discord, again, it's just one little um, type aspect of the community. It, it's not... Res it's not representative of the entire community reddit is the more hardcore gamers discord i'd say is generally probably the more hardcore gamers you know you guys know i've got a ton of experience with overwatch overwatch most of the players don't even consume any overwatch content and i've always said people who are actually watching videos like this on the games that they play they are hardcore players they are not the wider player base they're like the top 10 percent of players really that are super into the game but yeah it is very interesting nonetheless and it does show you but it isn't always black and white, is it? It's not always like, yeah, just, just fix the patch. Fix the game. Fix the patches. Fix the updates. It's like, actually, no. Players want different things. So what about fire weapons and damage over time? Now, <laughs> any planet that has got fire tornadoes on, they will instantly kill you, right? <laughs> because the fire damage has been crazily buffed in the game. Uh, this is super frustrating. Obviously, if a Hulk gets near you, it will just kill you if it's got the flamer because you'll just instantly die. Although, pro tip against the Hulks, you can just dive to ground and they won't get you. Like, if you dive at the Hulk, it, 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 it's actually above your headline, so you won't take the fire damage, which is actually kind of cool. Obviously, don't get too close because it will put its circular saw into you and then you'll instantly die. Or it'll stamp on you or something. That's not great, but you can jump. And also, for fire in general, if you do take fire damage, immediately dive. And even if you know you're going to go through fire, dive through it because you'll take less damage and diving puts out the fire damage as well. So then you can stim. But a lot of this doesn't really matter because you generally die instantly as soon as you get hit with fire. Well, Twinbeard, one of the community managers, has actually been posting about this. And he's highlighting the fact that they are looking at this, which is, yeah, thank God. So this is what he says. It is ridiculous or at least wrong and something we're, we're changing. We're looking over the fire systems as a whole at the moment. DPS, damage over time. That you die so quickly, the host issues, etc. 
It's an elaborate process, so we're doing it in parts. More info to follow. Have a nice weekend, and thanks for the input. I'm glad to hear you're enjoying Helldivers too. So obviously the host issues uh, he's referring to there is you only get the damage over time effects when you are the host. And as I've said in about five different videos now, damage over time effects, uh, well, being the host, sorry, doesn't mean you're the person that has instigated the missions. It's, it's randomly assigned when uh, you start a mission based on the power of the computer and the speed of the internet, essentially, of the people in your group. So you might be the host, you might not be the host. You can't really guarantee being the host unless you start a game with um, friends-only invites and you've got no friends. So no one can actually join your game, then you will be the host. <laughs> so by all means, go running around killing stuff with flame weapons, then you'll realize how stupidly strong they are. <laughs> he also follows up with, hi, yeah, uh, we're going through fire as a whole at the moment. The works, DPS, damage over time, the host thingy, not dying in two seconds from touching it, etc. Uh, probably introducing fixes in parts, but we're on it like Donkey Kong on barrels. So it is good news. You know, there's going to be fixes to this coming. And like, you know, at the end of the day, guys, fixes are going to come to the bugs in the game. Uh, but I think the debate at the moment is just generally around how fast these fixes are going to come and the whole thing of new content versus bug fixes. But yeah, it's good to see that they are working on this. And this is actually insane. I mean, we do really need to highlight this. This is honestly, honestly insane. Helldivers 2 is still one of the top selling games globally on Steam. This game is it's every week. It's in the top three every single week. Uh, this is super powerful. This is. And do you know why? Do you know why it's always in the top sellers? Because people are buying the game. Yeah, it's got a box price. But also, they're buying probably super credits to buy the war bonds, which goes back to the thing of, well, they need to keep making war bonds because if they don't, they're going to probably start falling out of the top sellers list unless they, I don't know, bring out an expansion for the game at some point. But that would take a long time to produce and, and all of that stuff. It is very interesting, though, I think, when you look back at Helldivers and you look back at the way the game's monetized. Because, you know, I, I haven't gone into super detail on the game's monetization. If any of you guys have watched my stuff on Overwatch uh, 2's monetization, you'll know that I am very outspoken against uh, very bad practices that are basically bad for the player. You know, at the end of the day, we want games to be good, but we don't want to feel like we're getting nickel and dimes. We want to actually feel good when we spend money on the games. And I don't think gamers have got an issue spending money on stuff like microtransactions and whatnot. But anyway, it makes them feel good and it's actually almost worth it in their eyes to do it. Um, whereas Helldivers is arguably quite fair because it does give you the chance to earn super credits in the game, which you can then use on uh, the premium battle passes, the war bonds, or to buy stuff out of the shop. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video. It's been my pleasure, as ever, to put this together. And, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm having a massive blast playing this game. And I hope you guys still are too. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See you soon.